you ready? Uh, well, yeah. Come on. Good morning.
Let me know. No, you just get one leaning oh, okay. on the everlasting arms, and we didn't do the whole verses.
We're not going to walk this walk just right through, you know. He's going to put us through some battles. He's going to put, okay. put us through some valleys. He's going to put us on the mountaintop. And oh, okay. We're going to be flying high. Yeah. And, you know, but when, when we're in the valley, you know, we're all dragging and everything, you know. And it seems like you're not going to make it back up the hill. But you are. You are. By the grace of God, you're going to get back up there. Praise God. You know, and I thank God for Amen. that. And I thank God for reminding us every day in His Word, you know, that He is with us. You know, I get a scripture every morning on my phone, and then I get a scripture from the First Lady, you know, we have a family page, and she sends out a scripture for us every morning and a prayer, you know, and that really helps me, that really boosts me to go on for the Lord. You know, we can't give up now, family, we can't give up, and lose hope and sight of what God has in store Amen. for us. Amen. We got to keep on going. We got to keep on fighting. You know, yesterday I picked up my nephew. Oh my God, you know, he wanted to come to the memorial service and I was like, oh man, I have to run back into town, pick him up and bring him back and, you know, run him back home. And, you know, I started to complain. Yeah. But the Lord said, no, man, there's there something go. there. There's something there. Sure enough, there was. You know, he needed to vent. He needed somebody to vent for, vent to that he could trust. And he put that trust in me, and he vented out. And I was sharing with my husband this morning. I said, God, he has so much bottled up inside of him. He has the word in him. Jesus, Jesus. You know, we got to the memorial, and we, we shared, we cried, you know, we laughed. And on the way, you know, from Chandler back in. We got to the memorial service and we sat in the car. And I asked him, I said, did you ever receive Christ into your life? He said, yeah, when I was in jail. I told him, I said, Ty, I said, I need that reassurance for myself. Will you say the sinner's prayer with me so I'll know? He said, he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, yes, Auntie, I will. So we prayed the sinner's prayer and it felt really good knowing, you know, that he's on his way. Mm -hmm. Man, this little girl, she's the one that's pushing them. Him and his girlfriend. She knows you kids can feel when things aren't right. Right. She always runs to them when she feels like that and she tells them, Mama, Daddy, let's pray. She knows how to pray. This little girl knows yeah. how to pray. She'll pray and she'll pray and she'll pray. Everything she prays. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise for everybody. So she prays with them and then he said that his girlfriend started doing a prayer too. And I said, good, good. You guys do that. You guys keep it up. Don't give up. We're here. I told him, we're yeah. here. You guys want to come to church? He told his daughter, he said, I'm going to church. I'm going to go to a memorial service. You want to go? She said, are they going to have Sunday school? <laughs> he said, no, they're having a memorial. Uh -huh. Then she said, no, I don't want to go if they're not going to have Sunday school. <laughs> he said, do you guys have Sunday school? I said, yeah, but it's just a little too hot out there for the kids right now. He said, okay. I said, but I was blessed. Man. That was the blessing that I got yesterday, you know, through all that. You know, God is good regardless Amen. when you're in the Amen. valley or on the mountaintop. He is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Life is easy when you're up on the
song and your testimony for this morning. Praise God. Amen. <coughs>
bad. Be in his word where you get the love, where you get the correction, where you get the rebuke. Not only from your pastor, but from the word. You have to dig in there and search it yourself. Yes. You, we cannot do it for you. You have to do it. That's a one-on-one -on -one thing with the Amen. Lord. So I encourage you today, church, continue seeking the Lord. Amen. Continue getting into his word. Things are getting worse again. Mm -hmm. But we know that God is in control. Amen. He's always in control. Amen. You know, just let him be control of your life today. Amen. See the wonders and the blessings that he's going to give. Not only physical, but spiritual. Spiritual, amen. Yeah, He's got you, a Lord. spiritual blessing for you, but you got to look for it in his amen. word. Amen. So God bless you. Somebody else. Taking on the cows, taking on our strays, you know, riding out to the mountains. We have the, all these little tubs together. Wow. Just riding from Blackwater all the way up to the mountains and Saddle Mountain, looking for our strays. And you no, know, I miss them. Mm -hmm. Today I think about it coming from an opiate. Mm -hmm. And I let you just thank them for it. all the words he said. I still remember every word of them. favorable. Mm -hmm. And you always laugh about it. You said this cowboy life through Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, man. And uh, I always talk, talk to him about, you know, talk to about the Lord as we were going. He said, I need to get to church. One of these days, something's going to happen and I'm just going to know what's going on. And I just, I need to see you in heaven. And, uh, you know, I just thank the Lord that, that He gave Him the words to encourage me yeah. through all these years, riding with Him and stuff like that, roping with Him there and there. Mm -hmm. But you know, I dedicate this to my dad who just made to Him. I just thank that everyone of you guys just thank you. Amen. God bless. Amen. serving, you know, and I was thinking about him, and 
and all the things that what he had to go through through his life and because his lifetime was different from mine. Amen. You know, back then they didn't. Uh, my dad was born in 28. Yep. And uh, so he was uh, he was up in an age. Uh -huh. But he was uh, but he was one <clears throat> one of those that. Uh, what I, one of the things that I really remember about my dad was that uh, he loved to take care of dogs. We always had dogs, and oh, there was a lot of times when uh, you know, her. when uh, our dogs would get sick, and then they would be uh, on their deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad would be over there, and he would, my dad would be talking to those dogs, mm -hmm. and talking to them, and often telling them, you know, it's all right. You know, just go where you need to go, and, you know, and, and I was thinking about that this morning, you know, how it was Father's Day, and, and how we, uh, how we're supposed to listen to our Father, amen, yeah. listen, to, listen to what he has to say, because when we're babes, we, we have the milk, and we get to learn, and hear, and listen, you know, and mim kind of mimic in a way, is what, what we hear, what we see other people doing. But then there comes to a point where, where we have to kind of mature, Man. and we have to kind of, I guess, kind of break away from that because God wants you to be on your own, right? You, you, you can, uh, well, yeah, we come into the fold and come and we come and we, we can uh, minister <clears throat> the word and song and music, but you know that we still have a ministry out there, you and I, right? Mm -hmm. And we still have that, and and that's where <clears throat> where we. Uh, Come here to hear, hear what we have, what he has to say for us, what we need to be built upon. But then we have to go out there and do it, be on our own to, to be on the meat day, man. Right. We're supposed to be on the meat by now. It's, uh, after two years, maybe you should be, man, you should be feeding yourself. Right. You should be eating some sirloin and some ribeye. <laughs> That's what you should be eating in the word, amen. And not just be fed from Sunday to Sunday or Sunday to Wednesday. Amen. Because <clears throat> when you do that, then you have something up here to say. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Something to glorify because uh, <laughs> we have a Father that's in heaven that cares about us, but He also cares about other people. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where we come in. Amen. We come to that. And, and like that, we, we were talking about last night. I, I was talking <clears throat> last night about my uh, our families. Families are kind of getting destructive. They're, they're kind of breaking apart. And there's always one or two that's in the family that's trying to hold it together. Uh -huh. Amen. And, and we can't do that. Amen. We can try to do it, but it's going to take our Father. Amen. Amen. And there you go. We do so much. Amen. To keep it together. That's why I like what my wife was saying about her, that her granddaughter that, that she's the one, that little girl's the one that's leading the family mm -hmm. into prayer. Amen. And that's maturity. Because we won't do that. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, but man, that's maturity. So that little girl has something. She's leaving. She's getting somewhere. I believe that God's going to use that little girl. Amen? And end that. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad to be here this morning. And uh, I'm glad everybody saw bright eyed bushy tail. Yes. Amen. 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 So, so let the festivities begin. I know it's Father's Day. Amen. Amen. So come up and testify. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Get ready for the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, church. Good morning. I praise the Lord today to be here, that we can come together. And, um, you know, I, too, want to say happy Father's Day to all fathers, all daddies. You know, I, I look at my brother, and um, he looks like my dad. And um, then we have a cousin named Sherwin White. And they Russell, look at Russell, <laughs> Russell White. And they look exactly, you can see the genes in them, the, the white figure and the man, I mean, our dads. And it gets me to thinking, and then I see my son, who looks like his dad, but I see my dad in him. My dad was an outspoken person, very funny. And um, 
he, he had a lot of traits, he did a lot of things. That's why my brother's like this, he can do things. But my son will talk to anybody and he'll encourage somebody, he'll, I mean, he'll laugh with somebody, he's just outspoken. And I tell him, you remind me of my dad. My dad was like that, he loved to talk to people. It didn't matter the, the color of a person. He would talk to him, talk to that person. And uh, <clears throat> today, when we look back, do you look like your father spiritually? Do, do, do we see the fruits in you? When we walk into a place and I see Max and I see him all mad and angry and just like, I don't want to be here, you know? Do we see the fruits of our Father in us? Do we just have the fruits right here, right here or in the church, and then we leave them here, and then we go outside and we're someone else? Do we have our Father's image in us? Do people know on Hilo River's finest, do they know that you are a child of the Most High? Or do they already know you that you're going to get mad and, you know, when things are not done according to what you want, right. according to what your flesh wants? Mm -hmm. Do they know you? Are, your, are you your father's image? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. There's a mighty river flowing. There's a mighty river flowing. It's in 
Not that we were just taught and taught and taught, but do you believe that he is real? Do you believe that he is here today? Because it takes your faith for him to move. It takes your belief. I can't see him, but I'm going to believe he's here. Yeah. I'm going through this trial, but I believe he'll take me through. Yeah. I am sick, but I'm going to make an effort because I believe you're here. I may not get to the house of God, but I'll get online because I believe you made a way and I believe you're here. The devil almost took all of us out, but by grace, meaning his grace that covered us. Somebody prayed for us for deliverance. We were on our way to a destructive, to a hell, but by grace, no, somebody's prayers came in and started stirring up the coals that were burning out. I said, Felina, come back, come back to the Lord. Auntie Connie, come back. We may be in the church, but we may not be in the church. I tell you, give your all. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, you know what? He healed my body. He touched my mind. He
changing you from yourself. Because our self was being destructive to ourself. I tell you, look what God has done because I would have messed up my marriage. I would have been the one to tear it apart. But when I surrendered and I gave it, God help me, I can't do this. I can't be free. I need your help. And it didn't take overnight. The things still try to come back. But I say, wait, hold up. I'm a child of the most high. I'm not going to lose my, my faith. I'm not going to lose my thing, my work with you because it's not worth it being that old person. Because the old will try to rise up and try to do things the way we used to. But God don't want you to be like that no more because he wants us to come and use this against the enemy that tries to come. So be ready and be happy and know because you are a child of the most high. Don't get me wrong, brothers and sisters, I have my trials. I heard, I sting like you, but I keep moving on. Cause there ain't nothing back there. We're like the people. One more shot example. We're like people. We got a bucket of people. And, and, and we come. Let's say, oh, Max, the year 19 or 22, 22. This is what Max did. And Tikani, you were like this in this year. Believe you were just like this yesterday. Anna, oh, got a bunch of Annas. Rita, Jay. Sometimes we carry a basket of who, what people we know. And we have their past in there. When we see Carlene, we say, oh, remember when Carlene was like this? Remember that year Blair did this? Oh, wait, pastor's got a whole bunch. But you know what? God don't have nothing. I'm you, don't look at the brother or the sister's past. Look what God has done. The Bible says that he throws them into the, the deepest of the sea, never to remember them no more. So if God can forgive us of our what more can we do for our brother and our sister and even more so that those that don't believe with them? Oh, I encourage you with that word. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're good, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
of our Lord, but not the literal death, not the physical death. But he's talking about another death that the Lord took care of on the cross. Amen. The Lord took care of this thing on the cross. What? The, the death of the flesh, the death of the, the natural man, the natural woman. Okay? Mm -hmm. I hope you can understand that <clears throat> this morning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He says also that the flesh has been executed, yet the spiritual battle still rages on. Right. And I want to just tell you that this morning, church, that the spiritual battle is going to rage on till the day that you die. Amen. Physical death. Till the day you die, there's going to be a battle. Okay? There's going to be a battle. Amen. That doesn't mean that those battles are going to reign over you. Amen. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're going to be crushed all the time by these battles. It doesn't mean that you should quit church because of the battles. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you should stay home <laughs> just because of the battles. Amen. Or, <laughs> right. It's going to read on Romans 7. If you want to write that down real quickly, Romans 7, you can read it on your own. Romans chapter 7, verses 14 to 25 talks about the, the, the battle that is here. Crucifixion of Christ, the death of the flesh and His power to reign over believers was accomplished already. See, Galatians 6, 1 through 11 tells us about that. That if we sow into the flesh, we're going to reap destruction or death. Amen. If we sow, if we uh, invest and the things of the natural man, the natural person, the natural desires that we have, we do have those. And it's going to haunt us for the rest of our day. Just because we're saved doesn't mean that that's taken away. But that is left there. For the power of God's word will be made known through what he's going to do in our life. Galatians 6, 1-11, through it talks about that Christians must wait until their glorification before they are finally rid of their unredeemed humanness. So, we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to wait until this body is glorified in God. It's changed. Amen. From corruptible to incorruptible. Alright? We're going to wait. Romans 8.23 talks about that. We're going to wait till that time is going to come. I don't know about you, but that's something to look forward to. Either if I lay down in the grave, or if the Lord should come. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we will be glorified in God. Amen. In that time. It is, it is going to happen according Amen. to the Word of God. And we've got to believe that. We've got to put our faith in that. Amen. So yet by walking in the Spirit, that's what the Bible says for us to be here. Walk in the Spirit that we can please God in this world. Oh, Even as we do that, walking in the Spirit. Walk Amen. The Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so, in uh, Galatians 5.16, it talks about, So I say, Paul, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay? okay? Amen. So, flesh... It's our subject this morning. Uh -oh. Amen. I was encouraging the people last night, and I don't know if anybody heard me, uh, but I was encouraging them this uh, last night that um, really I was in, I was in reminding and encouraging the, the believers that we have to take the lead. We have to set the tone in our homes or wherever we go that let's be, let's conduct, let's behave, let, let us live, live our lives that exemplifies that 
shows the rest that don't know. Right. This is how the Lord. Mm -hmm. Life in the Lord is. This is how life in God is. And I was encouraging them that one of the things that we need to do is, is, is to have knowledge of God's Word. Amen. Have to attain and to gain knowledge. Not just intellectual knowledge. Not just intellectual knowledge, but a knowing. There you go. A knowing in your heart, a knowing in your uh, in your spirit. Knowing I know the word of God in this way. Mm-hmm. And the flesh <clears throat> in uh, Galatians 5:13, it talks about. Let's go to Galatians 5:13. <clears throat> well, brethren, you have been called unto liberty or freedom. Only use not freedom for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Which is. Amen. And in this context, flesh refers to the sinful inclination of a fallen man. The sinful inclination, we are inclined, we we lean towards the sinful nature. What is that? Because at the end of this verse, he says how to deal with this. How do you combat? One of the ways to combat is to serve each other. Amen. Because it's not natural for us to serve others. Amen. In other words. But it's natural for us to think of ourselves first. Amen. To be selfish. Right. That's what the nature of the flesh is, is to be selfish. Right? Mm-hmm. We don't go beyond to serve others. Uh-huh. Right. Man. To see the need of somebody else other than yourself. We're always on the pedestal, in other words, in the area of the flesh. Uh-oh. We're always on the, the pedestal. We're always uh, in need. We're always uh, saying, nobody's paying attention to me, or, or nobody is texting me or calling me. We're always in that state Amen. of what the Bible calls the flesh. Yes. That's what flesh is. Flesh is the selfishness that we are. Uh-huh. And that stays with us for the rest of our life until the day we die. Man. But God deals with deals with that through His Word, by and through His Word. That He brings teachers our way. He brings ministers our way. He, he plants the church so that you and I can go to that place and learn together. Focus on the same thing together and learn what the flesh is. Because every one of us have the flesh. Even though we are saved, He gets doyed with Josh. God has already included us in His family, Mm -hmm. adopted us into His family. Even us as non-Jews, Gentiles, Gentiles, non-Jews, but we are included in the family of God. Rich or poor, Whatever race that you might be, if you have surrendered and believed on the Lord and the crucifixion on the cross, then you have been included in that family. The Bible says that the, that the Holy Spirit uh, baptized us into the body of Christ. Amen. He brought you into a family that you didn't have before. The only family that we had was the natural family. Right. Our biological family. But but when we got saved, we got baptized into a new family. Amen. And I really appreciate the word baptism because baptism is saying that you're not just floating on top. Woo. You're not just on the edge, on the yeah. beach, or on the shores of that water. 
but you have been immersed. You have been brought into so deep. I mean, it's not a surface thing, but you are been baptized or immersed into the family of God. Amen. And so we have that here this morning. We are fortunate, we are blessed that we can be uh, immersed in the family of God because we got saved. And God deals with our flesh. He's going to deal with that today. He's going to deal with that tomorrow. And the next day, He is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. You and I, we feel the effects of the flesh every day. Uh -huh, right. Either to ourselves or from somebody else's flesh. Right. That is our downfall many times. Amen. The flesh is the, the determining factor if I'm going to go to church many times. Right. The flesh is the determining factor many times that if I'm going to receive anything that the pastor is saying or the teacher is saying. Right. It all seems to be dependent on the flesh. Oh, but God is trying to wean us. God is Man. doing a weaning. God is doing a maturing and a building up of the spiritual, Amen. which which comes from the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's many today that are not in the house of God because of the flesh. Man. Ouch. Because of the unredeemed thinking. Uh -huh. The old stinking thinking. Amen. Uh -huh. And somehow we believers, uh, we, we get to the point where, I mean, we are tripping. We are tripping over this thing that we, the Bible calls the flesh. Amen. Amen. Which is the, uh, in Romans 7, 5, it talks about the realm of the flesh. And he was very specific. And I want to be that way this morning. When I say flesh, I don't mean the body. Right. I don't mean the physical body. It means, Paul says, the realm of the flesh means sinful passions aroused, in this case, aroused by the law. It was at work in us. What does that mean even? Because someday maybe you're going to hear that and you're not going to understand. So let's just get it out of the way right now. The Ten Commandments aroused did you know that aroused the sinful nature that we are yes because the bible says that we didn't know sin until the ten commandments said it Amen. we didn't realize it to the extent and how damaging and how how it causes us to be far away from god until the ten commandments was raised and said thou shalt not kill Amen. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not fornicate, and thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not all these different things. Don't envy somebody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, when the Ten Commandments was presented and brought to a people, and then it, it, uh, it exposed, it exposed that what we are. Amen. Let's go on. <laughs> in Galatians 5.16, like I, like I shared with you. So I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. I really love this word. I love this word because it, uh, it uh, makes so much sense when I read it. It says, walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? i come to find out that it means a lot of things to different people. Walking in the Spirit could mean a lot of things. Right. Um, but we should not alleviate or define things away from what the Scripture is saying. In other words, we shouldn't make up our own definition of what walking is. Amen. Right. It's very simple because we can get over spiritual, uh -huh. so spiritual that we make walking something else. Amen. Like I'm the only one that can speak in tongues and you can't. Uh -huh. Therefore, I am filled with the Spirit and you're not. Uh -oh. Believe it or not, that's already been done like that. It's already been interpreted like that. Amen. And that mindset causes division. Because then the people that speak in tongues, they don't want to have nothing to do with those that don't. Ouch. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. 
And, though, and so there's a separation that they say, well, I'm not going to go to that church. I'm not going to tune into that, that one because they don't know what I know. Amen. Oh, come on. See, if you really had the word, you would create a, you will make a bridge to me Amen. or to other people instead of tearing down the bridge just because they don't talk like you or they don't understand the way you do. Amen. But that's what goes on today. Amen. Today. Sad to say. And uh, I was telling tweets, I said, do you realize, I said, there's two times in my lifetime um, there, was a, there was a man that told me to roar like a lion. <laughs> and he got me standing out there with everybody and I was like, and he was Standing right here, and he had his hand up. He said, "Roar like a lion, brother! Roar like a lion!" <laughs> I couldn't get myself to do that. <laughs> I couldn't. I mean, I guess I could have tried, but uh, I just... And now, okay, those people like that, they will, they will say, "Well, you disobey the spirit, mm -hmm. right? Right? And that will cause." A division between me and the other person. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then he said, he said, roar like a lion, and he wouldn't let me go. He'd go off and walk to somebody else, and they said, roar like a lion, and those guys were, you know, they roar, and then no, no, not long, he'll come back to me, like he don't want to give up. <laughs> and he said, roar like a lion, brother, roar like a lion. But all the while, but I didn't do that. And years later, I heard somebody say the same thing. Right. He said, roar like a lion, roar your problems away. Mm -hmm. And I was telling tweets, I said, uh, it just dawned on me, I said, where did I hear that at? Or where did I read roar like a lion? Mm -hmm. The only one that roars like a lion, and he is not a lion, is the devil. Amen. And I could use the scriptures to back that up because the Bible says, he walks around seeking. He roars and he seeks those who may be devoured. So I said, Woo, I felt good. I didn't, I didn't have to roar like a lion because Satan is the one that does that. Amen. Amen. <coughs> All right. So, walking in the Spirit, I love this word. And I just want to close with this this morning. Walking in the Spirit is a. Uh, First of all, when we get saved, when you got saved, the, the Holy Spirit was involved in that. <clears throat> Walking means a continuous action. Think about it when you walk. One foot in front of the other. That is a continual action. There is no pause in that you get from point A to point B. Walking means a continual action. <clears throat> in this case, keep doing the Word of God. Amen. Keep studying the Word of God. Yes. And most of all, don't ever stop responding in obedience to the Word of God. Amen. That is walking in the Spirit. Because Jesus said, this is Spirit. But you're not going to find anything in this world, anything like this. That it is the Word of God. And we are to be active, to be continuous in it. Jesus also, I'm reminded, saying to those uh, Jews that believed on him at one point, he, he told them and said, if you continue in this, in other words, if you walk, if you continue in it, then you will know this word. Amen. And that word that you will know, again, not just intellectual knowledge, not just uh, memor memorizing it, but tr truly knowing it in your life, then it becomes a it becomes you. Amen. That you begin to live out what you have come to know. Amen. So then you will be made free. Made free from what? From the old flesh. Mm -hmm. You will be made free. 
uh, in the flesh, you would catch him tight to him, a mass of dark good. But the dark good of mass, but the good oil to you would catch him. There's a thing in us that yearns and craves after the worldly things. Right, there you go. Right? Amen. Just like the Bible says, chum in spirit form, in spiritualness, it says, do not forsake the assembly. That's a spiritual thing. But the worldly thing says, ah, I'll just stay home. I don't feel like getting up this morning. Yeah. I'm probably sh sure we all didn't feel like getting up this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen? But we have to deny that yeah. and get up. <laughs> you might you might wake up a uh, spa buck, right. as I did this morning. <laughs> okay. I, I, I woke up slowly, and I think as the years are going, Max is just starting to wake up slowly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, starting to wake up. I'm up. My eyes are open and I'm alert, and, but just waking up. Uh-huh. You ever been in a state where when you wake up, you don't want to be bothered? That's what I mean. <laughs> Let me wake up first. <laughs> and th this morning, Tweets was just, as you saw, saw her today early, this, that's how she was the moment she got up this morning. <laughs> now it's just like. <laughs> oh. Good Lord. Please <laughs> <laughs> pray for the pastor, you guys. <laughs> He bought my coffee and said, here you go, Mr. Soak. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if it's, maybe it's the coffee. Here you go, Mr. Soak. It's Jesus. Turns on the music, she's sitting there going like this. Talking away, I didn't, I didn't feel like talking. <laughs> he was like a wretch. <laughs> I remember, I don't know what scripture that was, uh, David, King David. I think before he was king, he says, he says, he makes a statement. He says, oh, so why are you so distraught? Mm -hmm. Why are you so downtrodden? I think it's how I said. mortgage. <laughs> See, David talked to his soul. Man. Because it was the soul that was in turmoil. It was the soul, the mind, yes. the will, and the emotion that was troubled. Amen. Why? Because of the way that the mind thinks. We don't always think godly thoughts. We don't always think the way that yes. God would have us to. That's why it's important for us that we learn how God wants us to think. Amen. It's important that the word get in us so we will have a fighting chance when this old stinking thinking comes up like it did in David. I'm sure it started with these thoughts. Matter of fact, that's where our, our feelings are affected by our thoughts. Amen. What we think, it affects how we feel. We don't judge it. And David began to talk to his soul from the spirit. Amen. Amen. He began to talk to the soul from what he knew of God. Amen. What he has learned of the Lord. His faithfulness. Amen. That he will deliver him from trouble. He will deliver him from any kind of opposition that the enemy is trying to do. David knew that in, deep down in his life. But even then, David was still troubled by that. And he began to talk. Yes. That's what we need to do. Amen. We need to recognize, don't. You know, we recognize that other people recognize us when we are in the flesh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> other people. And we recognize other people when they're in the flesh. Oh, yes. But, but do you recognize when you are in the flesh? Ooh. Oh, yeah. When the flesh gets, starts to reign over your life. I don't mean raindrops, I mean <laughs> govern, govern your life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and, and the church, we need to hear this. Amen. Amen. Continuous action, that's what walk means. Continuous. And, the, and when I say you, I mean your flesh is going to get tired of this. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh, I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Your flesh is going to get tired of this. Amen. And your flesh, if it's governing you, you're going to be out of here. And you're not going to continue. Oh, gosh. Right? Right. You're going to start out real good. I did. <laughs> On fire. Uh-huh. Can't wait to testify. Testify. Sing a song. Uh-huh. But time has a way of just being consistent over time. Either you're going to grow in the faith or you're just going to pretend. And if you're going to pretend, it's all going to end. Amen. That's why you see a lot of people that come start, they don't finish. They just quit. Amen. So it, it, I made it my mission to I want to I want to explain this in the simplest way I can so that you will know that there is a part of you that don't want to line up with the word of God. Amen. Because from the perspective of the flesh, this is very hard. From the perspective of the flesh, this is very <coughs> cruel. Amen. Very hurtful. Right. Very offensive Woo. Oh, from yes. the perspective of the Word of God. Oh, Jesus. Very, very offensive. What, what hurts is your flesh. Mm -hmm. yep. Your unredeemed part of you. That Remember James said that the planted Word of God is able to save your soul. We need saving. Alright. Mm -hmm. Continuous action or habitual lifestyle. That's what walking means. Walking in the Spirit. Walking. Being about the Father's business in His Word. It has to be habitual. What does that mean? <coughs> habit. It has to become a habit to you. I don't know if it's still the same, but it's been said that it takes like 26 days to form a new habit. That if you want a good a habit to form, you're going to have to keep doing that for 26 or a month. Then it has the chance to, you make that a new habit. Amen. How about reading the Word mm. for 30 days? Really put you all in it and studying it and obeying it. And I want to do what God wants me to do. Amen. You know, a lot of people wait for a dream and wait for a vision or wait for God to show them. Mm -hmm. But I just want to tell you that what God has established already, you don't need to give it to you Amen. in a dream. You don't need to give it to you in a vision. All you got to do is read and study the Word of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> There's a lot I want to say about that. Because even that, even this is going away. Going away. Amen. And something else is taking its place. Oh Lord, help us. Help us Lord. Something else is taking its place where it feeds the flesh. Mm -hmm. Because we, the flesh doesn't want this. And if we are so full of the flesh, then we're going to want something that will tickle this flesh. Something that will feed what I want. You guys ever hear of uh, songs? Here I go again. Songs that somebody changes it into a Christian song. Yes. But it's still the same old song. But they try to use it in a way 
where it's churchy mm -hmm. or has God in it. Ouch. But the beat is still the same. And guess who likes that? The flesh. The flesh gets flesh, wound flesh, up. Flesh. It perks up. It awakens. It gets stronger. <laughs> when we hear that old beat. We're not really hearing the words. We're just hearing the beat. <laughs> or that song. Right? So that's the danger of that. That we are feeding the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. It implies progress. Walking implies progress. Right? Mas mabag ida mabtiki da mo'y kishpa mo'hi hasko you are leaving one point and you are gaining another point. You are leaving one destination only to gain a different destination. Progress. Walking in the Spirit being about God by and through His Word, you are walking, you are gaining something that the flesh does not want. Amen. Amen. Alright? All right. As the believer submits to the Spirit's control, that is, this is what I want to close with this morning. When, when the believer, Akim, you, us, me, when we submit, that is a hard word in our day to day. Submit. Amen. My son and uh, Keenan and I, we have sometimes we have fun with each other, and uh, I ask him, I said, uh, Mr. Soak, are you <coughs> the head of your wife? Or he'll say that to me. Thank God we're at liberty to say, Yes, I am. <laughs> but I also know in our time right now, that is a very touchy subject. Uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> that if we, if we just go out in public and ask anybody, Are you the head of your wife? <laughs> Not your family, your wife, are you the head? Uh -huh. And they will say, Something like that to that effect. <laughs> or they'll look at her and then say, Yes. <laughs> Are you the head? <laughs> Submission. If I may, ladies. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. Now you don't have to answer me. But when the when the word of God says for you to submit to your husband, uh -huh. do you find an issue with that? Don't answer me. Because it could be mm -hmm. in our day and age today. It used to be way back, maybe two or three generations, that there was no issue in that. I, I would say, but now, today, it is an issue. And you might hear something like, ooh, him? I'm not going to submit to him. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, you're very much. But we can change. Ah, you invite this much. I know. I don't mean to meddle with you this morning, but but submission is required from us. We have to find wherever it's going to be. You have to submit to the Spirit's control. Amen. Okay? What does that mean? What does that even mean for me to respond to the Spirit's control? It just means that you obey the simple commands of the Scripture. Mm -hmm. That's what it means for you to submit to the Spirit's control because the Spirit, this is His work, this is His realm. He'll bring you into the truth so you will know the truth. Amen. Uh, so our job is to submit, our job is to respond in obedience 
to the simple commands of Scripture. So that's how we grow spiritually, by doing that. Growing spiritually. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I got so much to say about the, the flesh, but we'll just leave it at that this morning. I wanted to, uh, I wanted us to come to know that we do have a battle on our hands. We have a battle on our hands. And it's going to be for the rest of our life. And, but yet God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. And He yes, will send the uh, teachers. He will send a word Amen. from His scriptures. Uh -huh. And He will unveil it to you. Mm -hmm. Show it to you. So that you will know something about yourself. Remember, even though we see the flesh in other people, but we have to be concerned about our flesh. Amen. <clears throat> right? Right. We have to be concerned about our flesh. Is it reigning? Is it dominating my life? Tweets have told me in several occasions, several times. Now, he said, uh, she said, you know, I see you're getting slower. Slower. Mm -hmm. I like to think that she meant getting around. Maybe she means something else. Because I noticed that, we both noticed that we got to the point where we say, huh? <laughs> and, the other, and the other one said, God, you can't hear? <laughs> I noticed there's some, uh, there's some in impatience there between us. And one time we were going up to up in the Mojave, and uh, this past time, and and we we're going to the town of Lake Havasu on our way up out, and we went came out of town. There was nothing out there. Then she she looks at me and says, "Way, I need to use the restroom." And I said, hey, pick your boot chain, but come on, come on. You should have said that when we were in town. Because there's nothing out here. And then, good thing, just as soon as I said that, there's a circle K in the corner. But, <coughs> but the thing was, she did say that. And I didn't hear her. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't because my ears were plugged. It was because my attention was getting to where we were going. Right. And I was watching the Google the thing, the map. the map, trying to find out the best route, the shortest route to get over there. My focus was over there, and it wasn't right here. So she did say it, but because I was focused somewhere else, I wasn't able to hear her talking to me, saying that. So there's a whole other area of flesh that will cause disruption. Amen. Cause disruption. <coughs> That we, if we live in that realm, not in the spiritual, but in that realm, then there's a whole lot of problems in that. You understand? Mm -hmm. There's problems in it. That's where we get our problems from. That's where we get offended at. Right. That's yeah. where we get hurt. That's where we get uh, uh, nobody's paying attention to me or nobody this and that. All in that realm. Which God is trying to make less by His Word. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I was going to say something else, and I, I forget what I was going to say. Maybe that's, that's good enough for now. I'm 
don't want to overload you guys this morning, but uh, but the, the the flesh. I wanted to just encourage you and remind us that we are in the fight. We are in the battle. Amen. We are in the battle uh, to overcome this and let the word reign. Let God's ways reign in our life. Amen. Let's pray, Father. We come to you once again, Lord, today. We come to the close of our service here this morning, Lord. We just ask, I ask God that you would go with each one and minister to them continually, Lord, that they will come to know you. We will come to know you in a greater way, Lord. We just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs>
And Father, Lord God, we just ask that you continue to be with those, Lord God, that are without a father today, Lord God. Chantal and Joseph, Lord God, we uplift them to you today, Lord God, that you turn their day around, Lord God, and give them happiness, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, we just pray for Auntie Lynn, Lord, as she's in the hospital also, Lord God, that you will heal her foot, Lord God. Lord, all the infection that is in there, Lord, that you will clear it out, Lord God. And Lord, we just ask, Lord God, that you be on Mickey today, Lord God. Lord, that you will make a way for her, Lord God. That you clear the path for her, Lord God, and lead her in the right directions, Lord God. Lord, we know that you are able, Lord God. So we just give her to you today, Lord God. Father, Lord, those that, that are lost and undone without you, Lord, that are seeking for a way, Lord God, that they will find a way in you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the children today that are in the children's home, Lord God. We pray for the workers in that place, Lord God. Lord, that you will give them the love to give to the kids, Lord God. Father, Lord, we just ask that you just be with us throughout this day, Lord. Yes. As we uplift our fathers before you today, Lord God. Lord, that you would give them strength, Lord God. Lord, that you would continue to keep them moving, Lord God. Father, Lord God, for they're the head of the home, Lord God. That they would, they would bring their home up, Lord God, in you, Lord. Father, Lord, we just give you praise today. We give you glory, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, I pray for my brother and my sister, the yes, Allens, Lord God. Yes, Lord, for whatever situations they're going through today, Lord God, that we give them to you this morning, Lord God, and you would give them strength, Lord God, to go on, Lord God. Lord, if they're hanging by a thread, Lord God, that you would... Make that, th that thread thicker. Yes, the Lord. Lord God, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And Father, Lord God, we just oh. thank you today, Lord, for all yes. that you've done, Lord. Lord, those, Lord God, that are still heart heartbroken, Lord God, for their lo lost loved ones, yes, Lord. Lord those thank that you. they have lost, Lord God, we have lifted before you today, Lord God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our offering this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord those that are going to give, Lord, and those that can't, Lord God, that you will bless them, Lord, to give at another time, Lord. And thank Lord, you. we just thank you and we give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, this ends our service today. So, uh, church, would you say... Goodbye for everyone. Goodbye. Happy Father's Day. Oh, yes. Enjoy your day. Pastor Willie.